I love getting a new laptop as much as anybody does, but I gotta say, <laughs> Looking at the kit to build my very own AMD powered Framework 13 laptop, investment in Framework disclosure, I kind of wish I hadn't auctioned off my Intel one for that BC Children's fundraiser. It was kind of cool that it was my laptop of Theseus forever and I could keep putting new hardware in it. Oh well, such is life. Let's unbox this thing. I am looking at the Framework Laptop 13 DIY kit. It comes with bezel. Oh. A uh, purple bezel, that's a choice. There's a keyboard, now with non-shattered fingerprint sensor. Power adapter, don't need that. That's optional, you don't have to order that. That's one of the cool things about Framework. IO expansion modules, we'll get to those later. And of course, some memory and storage. Though, similarly, you can simply DYO if you wanna expand outside of the range of options that Framework provides to up to 64 gigs of DDR5-5600 memory and up to eight terabytes of storage, at least at the present time. If there are future SSDs that are available in greater capacities, there's no reason it couldn't support them. A bazillion more expansion modules. We really will get to those later. The only tool we'll need to assemble this. And now, the star of the show. I was actually the first one to be hands-on with Framework's Ryzen 7000 series Framework 13, but since that hands-on time, they have improved it in a lot of ways. For one thing, it doesn't blue screen constantly. It was pre-production at the time. For another, they have upgraded the hinge. Now, not only is it a little bit heavier, but it opens up 180 degrees, which, I mean, when I was in university, I actually used my laptop like that all the time. We didn't have smartphones. And the screen is now available with a matte option that's designed to be usable in basically any lighting conditions and is rated for 400 nits peak brightness. And we found it actually exceeded that fairly substantially. While we get this built, which shouldn't take too long, we can talk about some of the speeds and feeds. It's available with either a Ryzen 5 or Ryzen 7 processor, so that's with six or eight cores respectively. And it's worth noting, guys, that this is Ryzen 7000. So while these CPUs do have an NPU for AI tomfoolery, what they don't have is enough tops to be co-pilot ready uh, or to run features like Windows Recall, whether that matters to you or not, I leave entirely up to you. I've gotta say, I admire Framework's dedication to SODIMM memory upgrades. They will run at a slower speed compared to soldered memory, but they will be upgradable in the future, which is pretty nice to see. And they're still running at 5600, which is actually not that bad, even compared to some gaming laptops that we've seen. It's possible, actually it's probable, that we will see future configurations that are AI ready. I mean, they've got a RISC-V board coming. Did you see that? Ah, that is so cool. But at this time, you will be just regular intelligent. Since we're in here, this is a good time to have a look at our battery. The two versions come with different capacities, either 55 watt hours or 61 watt hours, and both are rated to have, I think it's 80% of their total capacity after a thousand charge and discharge cycles. Pretty darn impressive. You'll be using this thing for a very long time. And once you aren't using it anymore, one, two, three screws, is all it takes to rip it out and replace it. I guess I haven't really talked about the main pitch for framework. That was it. That was the build process. This thing is incredibly serviceable and the storage, RAM, and Wi-Fi card are all interchangeable. Actually, that Wi-Fi card is something that <laughs> I would probably wanna take out. AMD seems to have an agreement with all of their partners to use these MediaTek Wi-Fi chipsets with their Ryzen mobile processors and I'm not a huge fan. It's Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, which is fine, I guess, but I would really rather have Wi-Fi 7 and probably an Intel chipset. We've got two watt stereo speakers, a cooling solution that somehow has managed to stand the test of time. Like, that is darn impressive, the way that you've been able to upgrade these framework laptops through the ages here. And my friends, that's it. Now all we gotta do is snap on our magnetic bezel cover. Boop, 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 boop. Like that. Conveniently, Framework has little guides that you can access by simply scanning these QR codes available online. Pops on a little something like that. Oh my God, did this just turn on? Well, cool. Close that real quick and get this screwed together. 
Uh, yours won't do that, of course, because yours won't already have been tested by the labs team. While we're closing it up, the chassis is, as before, made out of a single machined piece of aluminum, giving it excellent structural rigidity. And now is a perfect time to have a look at our expansion cards. They have so many options available. You can put a display port, port on your laptop. You can expand with micro SD. You can just put a little one terabyte expansion thing. You could have <gasps> USB-A. You could have <gasps> USB-C. You could put <gasps> full-sized HDMI port, any combination you want. The Framework 13 supports four of these expansion cards and the Framework 16 supports up to six, I think it is. My usual loadout is two Cs, both of which can be used for charging, which is really convenient. You just kind of put them in wherever you want. And then I like to have an HDMI and I like to have a USB type A, although these other ones are very cool as well. And I will often carry around an extra, oh yeah, one of the ones I love. There it is. Ah, yes. My two and a half gig ethernet expansion. Just slide that in a little something like, like so. And I have two and a half gig LAN, baby. And because they just use USB type C, I can use this on anything. It's not just a framework expansion card. Oh, the three and a half mil jack one is for the framework 16 because it doesn't come with a three and a half mil jack, right? Yeah, okay. This one does have a three and a half millimeter jack by default though. Let's get these expansion cards installed. I like to have that on the left because that way if I have a dongle for my mouse or I'm using a wired mouse, it's not gonna interfere with my movements. And then I like my type C's at the back because I'm often using them for power. And then my HDMI can go there. So convenient, so customizable. That's honestly, Probably my favorite thing about this laptop. Oh yeah, and I guess that ignores the three by two display. It is great having a taller display like this for productivity. And it's about to get even better. They have a 2.8K 120 Hertz version of the display coming. What, so I'm using the 60 Hertz version like a pleb? We actually found that the matte display, while suitable for any indoor environment and most outdoor environments, was not overly bright, <laughs> overly color accurate, or overly great for gaming, which I wouldn't have said was a concern on the previous Intel models because as you guys can see from the performance numbers here, <laughs> the CPUs and GPUs in those aren't great for gaming, but on the AMD model, you can actually play some real games on this thing. So I would say that higher refresh rate display is gonna be a really big upgrade, even if you only run it at you know, a quarter of the resolution with uh, integer scaling. Why did I even have my toolkit out here? Coming soon to lttstore.com, but I didn't, I didn't need it. That's it. The whole thing is built. It really is that simple. And you don't have to run Windows. You can get a DIY version that's preloaded with absolutely nothing and run a variety of Linux distributions on your Framework 13 as well. I wish I had my old one in hand for a side-by-side -side comparison. It seems like they've changed the keyboard a little bit. I don't remember this longer escape and delete keys. I'm gonna try that in a moment though, with first this message from our sponsor. Manscaped. Thanks to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. For the bald kings out there, or soon to be bald kinks, check out their new Dome Shaver Pro Head Shaver and Dome Smoother Aftershave Lotion from Manscaped. The Dome Shaver Pro has five premium rotary blades designed for head shaving, powered by a 900 RPM motor for a consistent and efficient shave every time. It also has a magnetic blade head, making cleaning and replacing the blades a breeze. It's also portable and charges conveniently with a USB-C cable. The Dome Smoother Lotion is dermatologist tested and formulated specifically for the scalp with a fresh green and light wood scent that's subtle and refreshing. Check out the Dome Shaver Pro and Dome Smoother Lotion and use code CIRCUIT for 20% off and free shipping. Let's try out this keyboard, see how it feels. I've always been appreciative of how good Frameworks keyboard feels considering um, well, you know, the fact that it's a BYO laptop in what is still a very reasonable thin form factor. Like you would think they would have to give up somewhere, but the keyboard is not it. They manage 1.5 millimeters of travel, which is pretty typical or even above typical in this size class. And the feel and sound is overall okay. 
It's not the best keyboard on the market, but all things considered, it is pretty darn good. And what's cool is it's available in a wide variety of configurations, something that is not necessarily an option on you know glued together, bolted together laptops like other manufacturers make. Built-in hardware privacy switches for both the 1080p webcam and the included microphone array. Last time I had a look at these, I was pretty impressed by the quality of the camera, but that was before I saw any of the uh, <laughs> Snapdragon X Elite machines. It's still fine. It's good enough, especially when you consider that this is pretty challenging conditions with a light right behind me. Like, uh, yeah, these are these are just generally very challenging conditions. But the expectations are going to change in a big way now that we've got the ISP built onto those Snapdragon X Elite processors, and they're going to be able to use more similar camera modules to what you see in a typical smartphone. I like the new matte display. It has some issues though. We observed that the auto brightness sensor causes the gamma and color accuracy to go kind of out of whack when you overstimulate it. Um, like it's, to be clear, it's fine for daily use for an average consumer under the vast majority of conditions, but we just have observed a little bit of odd behavior and a little bit of lesser performance in terms of color accuracy compared to the glossier panel that was in our Intel framework laptop that we used for comparison. Hopefully that's something they can get resolved in software or firmware, but one thing they won't be resolving is that it's not really suitable for creative work. So maybe we'll see a difference when they launch the 2.8K version. That's one of the best things about these things having Ryzen in them now is you can actually flipping game on them. This is USB, hey, modern laptops only have USB, -C. Oh, I'm just kidding. There we go, I have any IO I want. I suck at Rocket League, by the way, please don't judge me. But what matters is the performance. Hey, there we go, now we're sitting at like 70 FPS, 70 plus. Very, very playable, even if you might want a little bit more if you're you know, a competitive player. I didn't even notice how bloody quiet this thing is. I guess I don't have any complaints, especially if it comes with these performance benefits. It not only outperformed our Intel model in gaming, it also outperformed our Intel model in productivity. At least creative productivity. It won Blender, Cinebench, and Puget Bench, but lost UL's Office Procyon, though not by a huge margin. I guess having more cores is still a good thing, as long as you don't want your battery to last too long. It also beat our Intel framework in battery life, in both endurance and in our stress test. It's hard to tell exactly what to cover and not cover with a device like this. I mean, yeah, normally we would discuss the weight, which is, you know, kind of mid. Uh, we would discuss the, you know, chassis flex, kind of mid as well. But these are all things that haven't changed since the original framework. I just can't take for granted that you guys have watched that before. We can listen to the speakers. Those actually get really loud. Uh, quality's fine. They're really loud though, if you're into that. The trackpad continues to be a trackpad. It's made of glass, it supports gestures. It's about average size, not the biggest, but also not restrictively small. And I think that's pretty much it. It's time to start daily driving this thing and I'll let you guys know on the WAN show if I have any additional thoughts. But overall, it seems like it's still a framework. They haven't lost track of their mission and as long as you're willing to pay a bit of a premium because yeah, they're not the cheapest devices to have something that you can upgrade and repair and service as needed, then they continue to serve that purpose extremely well. Subscribe to Short Circuit.